A good look at Vanderbilt Stadium where they are renewing this rivalry here in the state of Tennessee. The series that goes back to 1892, but for the last 75 years really been owned by Tennessee. But Derek Mason making some inroads. Vanderbilt has won this back-to-back -back years and four of the last six. Jeremy Pruitt trying to put his stamp on the Tennessee Vanderbilt rivalry. Dave Neal alongside former Georgia quarterback and SEC champ DJ Shockley. Glad you could join us. We'll check in with Don Davenport in a moment. But obviously this is big. You got two teams at five and six. Last couple of years, one of these teams, you know, Tennessee hasn't been playing for a whole yeah. lot. But listen, let's face it, there's a lot on the line between these two teams. Today. So much on the line. And for both head coaches, it means so much. The, the ability to have extra practices for Jeremy Pruitt coming to this season. I think everybody thought this team was not where it's going to be where they at right now. On the other side of the ball, you look at Derrick Mason. They got a senior laden quarterback, three singers on the offensive line. In his fifth season, you expected them to already be bowl eligible. But this is a big game for both sides. The ability there to have extra practices and get their teams into a bowl game means a lot. And for Derrick Mason, it may be ushering in, hey, a new AD coming in as well. So something good to put out there for his Vanderbilt team. Vanderbilt wins the toss. They want the football, so they are back to receive. Paxton Brooks will kick it away. Jamari Wakefield is back to return it. And we're underway in Nashville. Very returnable kick. Wakefield will take it at the five. And he is dropped at the 25-yard line. Down on the field, she'll be there all day. Is Dawn Davenport? Let's check in with her now. Hey, Dawn. Hey, Dave. Head coach Derek Mason said he felt like his team had been emotionally hijacked the last few weeks, some unnecessary penalties. So his message to his team in this rivalry game: keep the emotions in check, use your energy for execution. This week, the Vandy scout team was given free reign to get in guys' faces. They were allowed a little extra pushing and shoving, talk smack during practice. All of it to make sure these guys are ready and prepared to channel those emotions and a big time chippy game. Well, first play from scrimmage for Vanderbilt. They'll hand it off to Keyshawn Vaughn, who has been hard to stop the last three weeks. Kyle Shermer, though, his last game in this rivalry with Tennessee. He has been exceptional throughout his career. Uh, you see what he has done with 20 touchdown passes this year. The senior out of Philadelphia, and he's been just solid all season. He's completing passes at a little over 61%. They'll need to, him to have a good game today. Yeah, Dave, he is a big part of this offense, and obviously his arm will have to play a huge role in this ball game. There's Vaughn. He'll get it out over the 30. Give him four on the carry. Keyshawn Vaughn, though, has just been a stud. Three straight 100-yard games, and over those three games, he's amassed 481 yards. Look, that's more than Chandler and Jordan <laughs> for Tennessee have accumulated all season. Yeah, averaging seven yards of carry. Big third down here, but you're in a position where you can give it to your big-time back on third and four or allow your senior quarterback to make a play. Four-man rush. Shermer stands in there, dumps it off underneath. They hit the tight end. Pinkney, maybe a yard. Schamberger's the first one there, and that'll force a punting situation. So Tennessee's defense stands tall on the opening possession. And Tennessee plays zone on third and four. Vanderbilt tried to run some cross the routes. They kept everything underneath, and that's one thing Coach Pruitt wanted to see out of his defense was more knockback hits, not allowing to pick up that first down. I would be a successful first drive for Tennessee. Parker Tomei back to punt. Boy, low line drive kick. That's a dangerous kick that could hit a Tennessee player. Instead, it takes a Vanderbilt roll inside the 10. It's still going. It may get to the five, and it does. Wow, that was not pretty, but it was effective. 63 yards, and the Vols are backed up at the five-yard line for their opening possession. And here comes Jared Garantano. 148 consecutive pass attempts without an interception. That is a school record. Although Jared only played a couple of series last week, left in the first quarter against Missouri. Practiced all week. Coach Pruitt told us this week that he felt like Jared would be good to go, and he is under center as we start. Callaway also on the field. 
He was banged up against Missouri last week in that game that just didn't go well. 50 to 17, the Tigers beat the Vols. Hand off to Chandler off the right side. He'll pick up three. And you can see the emphasis already for both teams. Wanting to start the game, running the football, stay at manageable downs, but for both offenses, you have to be good on first down. And both offenses were. Can Tennessee take advantage of a pretty decent gain on first down? A lineup in that pistol on a second down and seven. Left side, it goes to Chandler, and he's out to the 15, and that is going to be good enough for a first down. Give him seven and a half. Some things that you love when you talk about having your quarterback in the ball game, he checked that play to the other side of the line of scrimmage because of the numbers. He did not want to run to the right side, checked it to his left side, and picks up a positive yard for first down. Garantano will throw. That one's batted straight down to the turf. Birchmeyer in there, getting his big paw up on it. Number 91, 6'4", 295, the sophomore out of Virginia. Quick slant over the middle. That pass is caught for a first down around the 28-yard line. Give that to Josh Palmer with a big catch. That's 13 yards. What's well, a tough, gritty catch right there. Yeah, that's a big-time catch. In traffic, three, four guys around him. But talk about the efficiency of Jared Garantano there on that particular throw, putting it right in his bread basket. A little play fake, buying some time is Garantano. He'll just throw it away. He gets hit on the throw. Well, some good coverage downfield by Vanderbilt. Pressure came from Josh Smith. A lot of pressure there, but this is what you like about a quarterback who's played a bunch of football this season. The decision-making process of Jared to throw that football away and not force it into coverage. They had good man coverage on the back end. Not to force the football into unwanted territory gives them a chance to live another down. Tim Jordan in it, running back to the left of Garantano. Coming near side, Jawan Jennings makes a man miss. He's out over the 35. That's an eight-yard pickup. Day Daly bringing him down. Jawan Jennings, a, a guy who's came off for him this season, has had his ups and downs throughout the year, but has been a big part of what they like to do. Brings up a big third and two here. Boy, this time last year, Jawan wasn't even on the team. He'd been kicked off by Brady Hope. But Jeremy Pruitt let him back on the team, and he has been, uh, as Jeremy said, he's been just a great teammate and has busted his tail all season long. There's Marquez Callaway with the catch. 35 catches on the year now for Callaway. Let's go to the studio and get an update. All right, Dave Schott, good to hear from you guys, Alabama. After Auburn had a touchdown come off the board on a hold, Bama gets the football, drives, and scores. Tua Tunga by Lowell, fifth rushing touchdown. Well, I'd like to say that I'm surprised, but I'm not. <laughs> Tim Jordan breaks a tackle, and he'll pick up a couple of yards. The guy who came up who almost made that play, Ladarius Wiley, Coach Mason's first recruit here at the University of Georgia. I mean, excuse me, at the University of Vanderbilt does a great job of, of coming up and filling that lane and forcing that ball to go back inside. But this is a tough, gritty Vanderbilt defense that's going to have to use that toughness to come up and make some plays today. Blitz comes from the side. Garantano gets it off to Jordan. He is hit around the 43, stood up there. So now it'll be third down after the five yard pickup. All about third and three and a half coming up for Tennessee. This drive started back at the five yard line. So if nothing else, they have an opportunity to flip the field here. But you're in a position where you can run it or throw it. This is a manageable third down. Jared's done a great job of making good decisions with the football. But you like where you are if you're Tennessee. Tenth play of the drive. A 
Boy, a five receiver look for Garantano. Blitz comes. He feels it. Overthrows Jennings. And that'll force the punt. Dimitri Moore came in with the pressure, number seven. A redshirt freshman out of Cedar Hill, Texas. Yeah, just an unblocked guy right through that A gap. Forcing Jared to throw the football just a little bit faster than he wanted to. And Dimitri Moore coming up with the pressure. And like you mentioned, Dave, if anything, it changes the field position for Tennessee. Moore has been playing some excellent football as this season has gone on. Trey Ellis back to return this punt. It is a high kick, and he's looking into the sun, makes the fair catch. Fair catch at the 16, a 39-yard punt. But Dimitri Moore making Garantano hurry things up and force the punt. Dates to 1892. It's been a long time since Vanderbilt sang a winning tune against Tennessee. Finally, the streak is dead. And a group of determined Tennessee players don't plan on history being rewritten. It starts with this in-state SEC rivalry. Wouldn't want to do it at no other place here in Tennessee. You know, give them their first eight loss season. That was last year in Knoxville as Vanderbilt won for the second consecutive time. They've won. Four of six, and you see it has been a long time that they've since they've won three in a row. Go back to 1926. Tennessee hoping to end all that discussion here this afternoon on the road. Second possession for Vanderbilt. Shermer. His pass is caught by CJ Bowler, the freshman. He'll pick up four. As Kyle Sherman gets that completion, the thing that makes him successful and gets going is his feet. It's all about his footwork, and Coach Mason talked about him being able to be efficient. It all happens from the waist down. You see 39th consecutive start. He's seen every coverage. He's seen every blitz. He has to play an extremely high level. He's only been sacked once in each of the last two games. I mean, he has had some pretty clean pockets. Gets that one away. Quick slant. That's a first down out over the 30 yard line. That goes to Bowler. That's a pickup of nine. Alante Taylor, the true freshman, in on the coverage. Watch the feet. Nice, easy, compact motion. Delivers a strike on the outside. Now you move the chains. These are the type of throws they want to get Kyle Shermer into. And he does a great job of hitting them when he has them. Bowler limps over to the sidelines. Boy, a lot of play fakes, three of them, and then they come underneath to Vaughn, who's got a couple of blockers out in front. Keyshawn cuts it back. He is a big play waiting to happen. He'll take it to midfield, 19-yard pickup. How about all that eye candy? Oh, so much going on in front of the linebackers and the safeties for Tennessee. And then you have to find out where he is. You fake the jet sweep. Here comes the ISO to Keyshawn Vaughn, and now you get him out in front with a bunch of linemen. And him in space is dangerous for anybody, let alone Tennessee. First down and 10 Commodores. Here's Vaughn. He'll pick up a couple of yards. And with that, let's get another update. Dari, what's going on? Guys, how about an answer from the Auburn Tigers? 10 plays, 73 yards. Anthony Schwartz on the end around. We are tied in Tuscaloosa. Two and a half minutes to go in quarter number one. Anthony Schwartz, perhaps the fastest man in oh. college athletics. They don't call him flash for nothing. But what, a, what a response there. Rivalry games, man. Anything can happen. Ask Michigan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quick hitter coming near side. Here's Lipscomb, and he will have another first down inside the 40 at the 38-yard line. Again, a 12 for Vanderbilt. Elijah Lipscomb, he is just as important to this offense as Keyshawn Vaughn. We talked about him. You see the numbers. He's averaging over 10 yards of reception, fourth in the league when yards. I mean, this guy has been a huge, huge difference maker for Vanderbilt. And when he gets a chance to be one on one, he usually comes down with a big time play.
Lassen game in the backfield. Shermer, pressure comes. He'll be dropped back at the 48. Alexis Johnson getting the sack. His third of the season. And Alexa Johnson, you're going to see him come right up here. He's going to come right through here and make this play. But just beats him up through the, swims him up and coming through. And you see nowhere for Kyle Sherman to go with the football. He wanted to take a shot to Kalaja lifts him down the field. It was well guarded on the back end, and he has to eat it. Second and 19 now. He'll go to Vaughn out in the flat. He cuts it back, stays on his feet. Keyshawn, boy, got a lot of the yardage back. 14 of the 19 that they needed. Nigel Warrior drags him down, but now you've got a manageable third down. And that's what makes him so important. You throw a one-yard route to Keyshawn Vaughn, and Kyle Sherman knows if I throw the football out in the flat to a guy who can make a couple people miss, now I give myself a chance on third down. The decisions that he's made so far is the reason why they're able to move the football. Here comes another critical third down. Eighth play of this drive. One guy we haven't talked about is Jared Pickney right there in the slot. Oh, it might be a free play here for Vanderbilt. Over the middle pass is caught. Well, I think Lipscomb had the first down, but turned it back inside. And, but a flag is down. may not matter anyway. Offside, number 98 defense. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. There you go. Mark Curls, our referee today. But I tell you what, you want to talk about a guy who likes playing Tennessee? It's Kyle Shermer. He has just uh, lit up Tennessee over the years. He has thrown for over 900 yards, nine touchdowns, and just a couple of interceptions. You see what he did in... 2016, a career high 416 yards yeah. through the air. I mean, you look at 2017, four touchdowns. He was 20 of 31 in that ball game. Kyle Sherman's not the reason why they. He's the big reason why they have beaten Tennessee. Here's the sweep. Lipscomb, nowhere to go. He'll lose a couple of yards in the process. Balin Buchanan, the junior, coming up from the corner spot, making a play. And Balin Buchanan is a guy who does a great job of coming up from that secondary position. But you see number 34, he comes up and, and does a great job of pushing that to the side, which is Darren Kirkland. Pushes that, stretches it all the way out, and allows the defensive backs to come up to make a solid play there. Negative yardage plays on first down hurt you every time. The, the fact that Bryce Thompson and Alante Taylor, two true freshmen, have been able to play in the SEC has allowed Buchanan to play some nickel as well. Here's Vaughn. Ooh, big collision around the 25-yard line. Vaughn is slow to get up. What? You can hear the, almost the, the helmets connect. Derek Mason comes out and says, uh, you just need to... Let's <laughs> check you out for a second. Yeah, take a deep breath and let's reassess this. Boy, that is a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit again. A, a, you know, a, a running back is not a defenseless player. Yeah, that's a... That's the one that's going to ring your bell a little bit there. And Bryce Thompson gets that last little lick on in there. You know, I, I think they need to reevaluate that defenseless player thing. Sometimes a ball carry is being held. Right. And you can't do anything. Your arms are held. How You are defenseless at that point. Lipscomb makes the catch. Trying to break a tackle. And he'll pick up the first down. Alante Taylor had him. But Lipscomb just wrestled far enough away to pick up the first down. If you want to spotlight, watch him just get out here in the flat. Easy completion. They're playing cover two on the outside. But look at the extra effort. This is the extra effort play that's enabled. My man Lipscomb to be very, very efficient. But give Kari Blast game as well. The back. A lot of credit there coming in, picking up a blitz. Boy, they'll go empty set here. Pinkney goes in motion on first down and ten. Four-man rush. Shermer steps up. Fired to the end zone. Pinkney. Touchdown. 17 yards.
One guy we cannot forget about is Jared Pigney, one of the top tight ends, I believe, in all the country. And when you need a big play, you find Pigney, but a very, very impressive drive for Vanderbilt. Riley Gay to attempt the point after. He'll split the uprights. That was a big boy drive. 11 plays, 84 yards, over seven minutes off the clock. Sherman to Pinkney, seventh time this season they've hit each other. Fake the screen, and you fall step just a little bit, and you find your big tight end in the back. Bandy up seven to nothing. Here in Nashville, Vanderbilt leading 7 0 after an 11 play drive that chewed up seven minutes off the clock. And we saw quite a bit in terms of looks offensively, but when it came down to it, it was their uh, two big guns right there. Jared Pinkney, the tight end with the seventh touchdown reception of the year. And how about the fact that Kyle Shermer has started this game eight of eight? for 84 yards. Well, Dave, you talked about he loves playing against Tennessee. Well, he's showing that in his first quarter. But he's just doing the small things, checking it down to his backs, throwing it to open guys. I mean, those are the things you have to do to win these robbery games, not try to do too much. 61 career touchdown passes now for Kyle Shermer as that will hit the end zone and come out to the 25-yard line. We need to step away. We have just 138 to go here in the first quarter. Back in a moment. Dari Noka in studio. You saw Auburn's answer. Alabama answered Auburn's answer. Thanks for following. Tua to Henry Ruggs. Touchdown. Eight plays, 65 yards, 14-7. Roll time. Thank you, Dari. And you see what's been going on with the SEC this weekend. Mississippi State looked really good on Thursday night. And speaking of looking good, I'd say the last couple of weeks, Missouri is clicking. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they just put on a show. In some bad weather yesterday, and Georgia smashed Georgia Tech. Florida, I'm not going to say smash Florida State because that would that would not be uh, right. Dave, that's a smash. <laughs> Forty. I know. I know you have a a little bit for uh, that team to the right right yeah, there, but yeah. that's a smash. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go with you. A lot of teams took uh, smashed us this year. But, you know. <laughs> We'll focus in because no bowl game for the first time in what is it, 35, 36 years for Florida oh. State. Wow. So that's uh, that's pretty much it for the for the season. Little stutter step in the hole for Ty Chandler. He'll get a yard or two. Josh Smith. Tell you what, these Tennessee running backs, I, you got to give them some credit. You know, they've narrowed this thing down to basically Jordan and Chandler. These guys really. How many times have we seen it where they're having to dodge a guy a yard in the backfield yeah. to get some positive yardage? Cameron Ted on the last play. Immediate penetration. Some cut blocks underneath and almost picked off. That was batted in the air by Josh Smith, the senior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just down the road, getting his hands up in the air. Well, if he doesn't tip this, Ladarius Wiley, you see him, he's already broke on the football. He's walking into the end zone. So for lucky enough for Jerry Gentano, that ball was tipped. Garantano dancing in that pocket, buying time, going deep down the field, but that'll be into the Tennessee bench area and a three and out for Tennessee. And they might go back to first down. The inability to run the football, getting penetration earlier, Cameron Ted on that first down play. Now you're in second to third long, and it's hard when you have an offensive line that struggled to protect your quarterback, and it's quick, simple three and out. Joe Doyle will punt to Trey Ellis. Joe, the redshirt freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee, eighth in the conference in punting this year, averaging almost 42 per kick. Good high kick. Fair catch called for and taken at the 35-yard line. 40-yard punt. Vanderbilt with the football. We're going to step aside for just 60 seconds back to Music City after this.
eight of eight to start this game. What's been working for Kyle Shermer? Well, he's been in rhythm for the first part of his ball game, being able to, to find open guys in space, quick, easy routes, and then anytime you can throw a screen in space. But I love that ball, taking the air out of it, putting it on his receiver. That is a confident throw, and it is a confident quarterback to start this ball game in Kyle Shermer. Yeah, how about that last drive? He was seven out of seven on that 11 play drive. Hit Pinkney with the touchdown. How Jared Pinkney doesn't make the semifinal list for the Mackey Award for best tight end in the I'm country is I am with you. I'm going to say absurd. <laughs> He's Sean Vaughn on the carry. Let's go downstairs, check in with Dawn. Yeah, guys, Keyshawn Vaughn spent quite a bit of time in the injury tent after that helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. He walked out, though, shaking his head yes towards his teammates. I also want to point out, though, wide receiver Kalijah Lipscomb also spent some significant time in the injury tent after that last possession. These two are key for that rhythm you talk about for uh, Kyle Shermer. No doubt, Don. You talk about uh, the stars at each one of those levels in the backfield. Vaughn at wide receiver. It's Lipscomb tight end. You got Pinckney. Here's Vaughn. He's hit around the 44 yard line. He'll pick up six yards. And he's slow to get up again. Keyshawn Vaughn is still down. And you wonder if he got his bell rung again. Oh boy. Yeah, easily could have been some remnants of the last one. Watch coming right at the end right here. Another. He got hit from both Gosh. sides on that particular run. Comes in from the right side is Nigel Warrior. Oh, that is that is that is just uh, that's painful to watch. A painful rush, but one that takes Keyshawn Vaughn over a thousand yards this season. First eight games this year, really didn't get the ball that much. He averaged about 10 yards or 10 carries per game through those first eight, but the last three he's been averaging 22 rushes per contest, and he is now up over a thousand yards. We hope he's all right. We'll try to get an update when we come back, as that is the end of the first quarter. Vanderbilt leading Tennessee seven to nothing here in Nashville. Ten minutes of the first quarter, Vanderbilt had control of the football. They control it here to start the second quarter on a first down and ten. Kari blasting game hit right at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard. We may see a lot of blasting game in Wakefield the rest of this afternoon after Keyshawn Vaughn has had a few helmet to helmet hits as he walks back into the Vanderbilt locker room area. Let's go down to Dawn. Yeah, guys, spent some time in the injury tent, walked in, lifting up kind of his left arm shoulder area when he walked in the tent. They immediately walked out. He's headed to the locker room. And Coach Mason told us Keyshawn Vaughn has really been the difference in offensive efficiency for them. So this is a big one. I'll keep an eye on it. Thanks, Dawn. Blast again, trying to turn the corner, cuts it back, crosses midfield. And that'll give Tennessee a third and manageable coming up as he picks up seven. Micah Abernathy, the free safety, coming up to make the play. Micah, the senior out of Atlanta, has three tackles this afternoon. But you look at number 80, Pinkney, there on your screen. This is right his wheelhouse, right? Oh. Down a short. Yeah, this is the area where you try to find a Jared Pinkney to, but most of the time we've seen him find or look for Mr. Kalijah Lipscomb. Lipscomb will line up in the backfield to the right of Shermer. Also back there is Blassing game. Pinkney lined up in the near side slot. They will swing it this way and get it to Blassing game. Cuts it back, has the first down. Boy, Daniel Batuli was there to make the play, and Blassing game just cut right by him. And those are the plays that are frustrating for Jeremy Pruitt and his team. They have it all ready. Look at that. You have a guy right there in position. All you have to do is make the tackle, and you're off the field. Those have been some of the key plays for this defense all year long. They just have not been able to get off the field. And you point to that one on this drive. Batuli out of Antioch, Tennessee, near Nashville. 
Shermer under pressure has a man it is blasting game he's inside the 30 he was wide open 15 yards Daryl Taylor putting some pressure on Shermer who had just enough time to get rid of the football and here you go you want to take a shot down the field but because of the instant pressure Kyle Shermer knows exactly where to go with the football Daryl Taylor comes up against the pressure but because you're not able to look down the field and get that pressure you immediately know where your outlet is and you pick up a positive yardage anyway. Schirmer is 10 out of 10 to start this game for 105 yards and a touchdown. Wakefield now at running back. He lines up seven yards deep. Play fake. Schirmer over the middle. Pinkney inside the 15. First down, Vanderbilt. Dave, sometimes the quarterback, when you're feeling it, you can just throw it from just about any angle, platform. He's actually headed towards the sideline and watch him go through all his progressions and look where that football is out in front not throwing it at the receiver but throwing it to where the receiver is going. Kai Abernathy on the coverage but Kyle Shermer is just playing at a different level right now and he's seeing the field so well. Some more play action. Pinkney again. Stays in bounds, dives for the end zone. Actually, they're going to say he was out around the six. So a seven-yard pickup. It'll be second down and about three. And you love the call by Andy Luck. We're coming back with another play action rollout, getting your quarterback on the perimeter, and you get out leverage and you give it to your big tight end. And again for Tennessee, you have the sideline as another defender, and you're not able to get him down to the ball, get him down on the field. Brings up a short second down for him. Off the left side goes Jamari Wakefield. He'll get it down to about the two and a half. That'll be good enough for the first down. So it'll be first and goal from just inside the three yard line. And this is prime area for Jamari Wakefield, who comes in at 6'1", 220. The sophomore ends up coming off the field, but this is prime territory for him. Kari Blassingame comes in, and he's 6'1", 230, so you bring a bigger back in right near the goal line. Expect to run here. Lipscomb will line up to the right side. Now Lipscomb in motion. They will hand it to Kalijah. Good block by Pinkney, who drives his man through the end zone. Boy, Andy Ludwig showing us his entire arsenal on offense. And Dave, you, you talked about it. Jared Pinkney can do it all. He can block, he can catch, he can run, he's athletic, and it's only right he escorts Kalaja Lipscomb into the end zone for another long and consistent drive but very steady for Vanderbilt. Point after is up and good. That drive was 10 plays 66 yards 521 off the clock Kalaja Lipscomb. He's done it all this year for Vanderbilt this time. Look at Pinkney with the block. Doesn't get much easier than that. Catch and just led his teammate Kalijah Lipscomb into the end zone for the second touchdown. Watch this block by number 80. Watch where the contact starts. Look where the contact starts and watch where it ends up finishing for Jared Pigney. Kai Abernathy is literally on skates right there. <laughs> and I love that he was even more excited after that than any catch I've seen him make in his career. It is 14 to nothing. 10.33 to go here in the second quarter. You know, again, I, I mentioned it earlier, but I'm having a hard time believing Jared Pinkney shouldn't be on the Mackey. I mean, he, they, they, they was semifinalist, and then it was finalist. You see the seven that made the semifinalist list, and you see the three highlighted there are the three finalists. But how does he not make 
the top seven. I mean, 45 catches, seven touchdowns. He has been a one-man wrecking machine. And he's gotten so much better. Last year, he had 22 catches and three touchdowns for 273 yards. He's taking his game to a new level. Over 700 yards receiving for Pinckney this year. Here's Garantano. I haven't seen the Tennessee offense on the field in a while going deep. That one's up for grabs and almost picked off. Boy, it looked like Callaway might have been in a shoving match with Aline Muhammad. And this ball I thought was a little bit late because you, you can see he had to stop and go up for the ball. But this is what a 50-50 ball. It looks like Muhammad kind of pulls yeah. on him just at the end right there. So I think Callaway may have had a case for a little P.I. A little fake and the ball was thrown behind. Boy, Callaway got hit by Wiley as the ball went by him. He's slow to get up. That could have been picked off. I mean, this is a wide open. This is this is all on Jared. He has to hit it. He's simple slant route. Unfortunately, you're not able to come down with that. But once again, just like last job, they're in the third and long. Yeah. Five straight incompletions for Garantano, who is four of eleven this afternoon. Pressure comes. Tennessee picks it up. Wide side throw. It's caught on the outside by Palmer. Is it enough? They spot it at the 35, and that'll be good enough to move the chains. Derek Mason's having a tough time believing that that's where the spot was. That's a big-time throw. Give, yes. Give Garitano a, a lot of credit. Standing here under the pressure. That's a big-time throw and catch on third and long. Ooh. Off coverage on the outside. Did he ever get to the 35? I don't even know if he got there. Looks like when he catches the football, the ball's right on that 35, but... Watch it right when he catches the football right there. Yeah, you, you're right. It, it's and that's pretty close and it looks like that's where they have the ball spotted right at the edge of the 35 yard line. All it needs to do is that nose needs to touch the 35 for a first down. Tell you what that looks like one of those calls that it was ruled that he made it to the 35. Yeah, that will stand. It's hard to really push that much further back and I love the high angle view there we just got it just it shows you exactly where he catches the football and watch he's coming back back out of it but look where that left foot lands and he catches the football that is clearly on the 35 yard line and there's the ball it's right on the edge See, again I just I think it's hard to overturn the call in the field which was he got it to the 35 boy I would say it's a first down. I mean, looks like he got it to the 35 where that football, where he caught the football. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Yeah, I agree with that. I do too. <laughs> Not that our opinion matters, but <laughs> in case you were wondering. I just like the fact we were right, Dave. That's all. That's it. We were right. Even when we're wrong, we're right. <laughs> so first down and 10 for Tennessee. Best throw of the day for Garantano. Gets him out of a, a little bit of a jam. Go handoff inside to Jordan. He'll cut it to the 38-yard line. So spot it out there closer to the 39. Give him four. Jordan Griffin, his first tackle today. Jordan has been a tackle machine for Vanderbilt, 107 now, second in the conference in that department. Again, it's Jordan, left side, and he is walloped after he got across the 40. Gain of two. Big third down here, though. I mean, this is probably the more, most critical drive of this first half for Tennessee. We just saw the big throw and conversion on third and ten. This is a little bit easier third down. But where are your playmakers for Tennessee? Where is Marquez Callaway who lines up here at the top? Nice catch on the outside by Dominic Wood Anderson, the tight end. Well, that was a hot 
Tamale coming his way. Yeah, we talked about Kyle Sherman and his confidence throwing the football. We're starting to see it on this drive now. Jared's starting to settle in, and this is knowing you only need three or four yards and putting it right on Anderson for a first down. Big, big throw and catch. Jerry Pruitt telling us this week that when people come watch practice, the guy that gets a lot of oohs and ahs is Dominic Wood Anderson. Oh, big collision at the 45-yard line. Chandler came in at running back and just got walloped. Go on, Williams. And this is all on Marquez Callow. He takes a bad angle, and the corner just plays his leverage and comes up and makes the play. But this is all on Marquez Callaway. He has to block the perimeter pressure on the outside, and Williams makes him pay. Boy, Williams is some kind of player, the junior from right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Garantano, high throw, but the catch is made by Murphy. That's a gain of six. Garantano's starting to get some, some rhythm here at Vanderbilt Stadium. And he needs it. This is the pivotal drive. They, we see on this drive already have two third down conversions. Can he do it again? Underneath hits Wood Anderson, but he has stopped short. Only about a yard. Dimitri Moore making the play. You see him come across, and it's just really nothing there. Once again, we've seen it a couple times. We saw it on the first drive of the game. Vanderbilt playing zone defense, keeping everything underneath. Tennessee loves the crossing routes to try to get mismatches. But they've done a great job of tackling in space, not allowing any extra yards after the catch. 69 total yards for Tennessee, 153 for Vanderbilt. Trey Ellis back to return this kick. High end over end. That will hit at the five and bounce into the end zone. 6.23 to go before halftime. Vanderbilt up two touchdowns. Hey, don't forget, coming up at 7.30 Eastern time, we've got a good one coming up. Seventh ranked LSU taking on number 22, Texas A&M. It's our SEC Saturday night matchup presented by Holiday Inn Express. The game, of course, always streaming live on the ESPN app. You know, when you start looking at the SEC and overall records, there's going to be 11 bowl eligible teams. 10 right now, and the winner of this one gets to go. I Pretty good I mean, season, huh? Yeah, I mean, that just it speaks to the talent that's in this league and how tough it is to win. And I think that's why every year, you know, the SEC gets a lot of talk about if two teams can make it into the college football playoff because if you go through this gauntlet of SEC games and you make it through, it's well deserving. Shermer has yet to throw an incomplete pass. That's a pickup of seven brought down by Alante Taylor. But here's a look at where SEC teams can go. And of course, this doesn't include the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. But Citrus Bowl, Outback Bowl. Good bowls. There was some talk if Tennessee was able to win this game, that they would be heading toward the Liberty Bowl. Vanderbilt trying to spoil that little party. Third down coming up now for Commodores. As the clock is at 540, we have not seen Kalijah, or excuse me, Keyshawn Vaughn since he went into the locker room during Vanderbilt's last offensive possession. Looks like Tennessee's playing zone coverage. Four-man rush still delayed. Blitz trying to dump it off underneath the blasting game. 
He's got a lot of running room out to the 45. That's a first down. Batuli knocks him to the turf for 21 yards. I don't know how he came out of that pack of players. Well, you, you're playing two man, and who's supposed to have him is Kirkland, and he jumps to the opposite side, and Kari Blasigan jumps out to the right side, and he loses him in coverage and picks up a big play there on two man coverage for Tennessee. This start is amazing for Kyle Shermer. 14 of 14, 154. Inside handoff, some running room there for Kari Blassen game. He'll pick up four and a half. Batuli again, along with Darren Kirkland, making the stop for the balls. And then you talk about the efficiency of Kyle Shermer being so efficient with the football. Well, that softens the defense up. And now we're seeing four, five, six yards of pop on first down running the football. It's all the credit to Kyle Shermer. And most time you say maybe you pass off the run. Well, now it's all because of Kyle Sherman's ability to throw the football that the run is starting to click as well. Second down. Oh, bobbled snap. Shermer reverses course. Shermer has a first down. That is exactly, if that doesn't epitomize how this has gone for Vanderbilt, I don't yeah. know what does. <laughs> when things are going right for you, they're going right in so many different ways. This could be such a bad play, but this senior improvises, makes a play and says, hey, I got some wheels as well. Picks up a first down, moves the chains. If those are wheels, then I've got wheels too, dude. <laughs> it only matters. <laughs> Getting from point A to point B, right. Dave. He got the first down. <laughs> At the 40 yard line, couple of tight ends. Another little sweep to Lipscomb, who'll get it down to the 37 yard line, three yard game. And I can't stress enough, Dave, when we talk about Tennessee and his defense and having to get stops, and you have an opportunity to get a guy like Kalijah Lipscomb on the ground for either a zero yardage gain or a negative yardage gain, and you're going to get him on the ground. You got three missed tackles for Tennessee in this ball game already. They have to do a better job of tackling. Pinkney goes in motion, flips to the right side, settles in there. I'll just run the left side here, and boy, Tennessee's front seven having a tough time slowing down the run game right now. Let's get an update, Dari. All right, guys, Auburn got a blocked punt deep in Alabama territory, and two plays later, a little trickery. Jared Stidham to Ryan Davis, who found Malik Miller, 17-14, the Bama lead now, guys. Boy, it seems like Guts Malzahn has some play like that every week. Every week he has one, but hey, it's a robbery game. You got to bring out everything. Pinkney will set up in the backfield now. Slides out. Shermer got tripped up. Nice play from DeAndre Johnson, who trips up Shermer. That was a heck of a play by the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Otherwise, that might have picked up another 10, 15 yards. Yeah, that was out the gate to the backside, and here's a big fourth down yes. call right here. Fourth and about a half a yard. If you're Tennessee, you gotta stand up here. You gotta find a way to get penetration and stop this play. Quarterback sneak it. Oh, absolutely. The quarterback's 225. They'll go handoff. Blasting game was hit, but falls forward. First down, Vanderbilt. And now some Vanderbilt trying to go a little tempo. You're Vanderbilt, you still got plenty of time. You got a little bit over a minute right before halftime. Pressure comes down, goes Shermer. Daryl Taylor with the sack. Loss of eight on the play. Going right here against Cochran. He just gets right around the edge. You can see the speed. He just catches Cochran off the edge there. It looks like Cochran wasn't even ready. Gets that quick first step. 105 to go before halftime. Time out on the field. We'll step aside back in a moment. 
Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report is coming up in a hurry. Doring, Chiswick, Noka here. Iron Bowl update. It's close right now in T-Town. Florida, Georgia dominating the ACC, but what do you think of Vandy? Here? Well, Vandy was in trouble when Vaughn went out, but Kyle Shermer's taking it in his own hands. Vandy playing great defense, too. Props to blossing game as well for Stephanie, guys. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... Vanderbilt has been a different team here lately. As a matter of fact, you go back over their schedule. There are a few games they probably should have won that they didn't. This could be a whole new season. There's Blassing game with a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Alexis Johnson might have jumped off sides. He already did that once this afternoon. Mark Curls, our referee today. Offside defense, the penalties declined. Result of the play is third down. <laughs> Peru just cannot believe it. I know defensive line coach Tracy Rocker as well. He will, right there, you see Coach Rocker right there, he will not be happy with Alexis Johnson coming off the sideline. Shermer trying to set up a screen. Oh, went right through the hands of Blasting Game. The first incomplete pass of the day for Kyle Shermer, and it was probably one of the easier throws he's had. 15 of 16. 165 yards. And he's probably even more mad because it was set up. <laughs> it was set up, and it went right through his hands. And Shermer's like, oh, that was a touchdown. If anything, you pick up a first down, but right through the hands, and that's where you see a Keyshawn Vaughn there. So Riley Gay comes out to attempt a 43-yard field goal. He was doing some shadow kicking during a timeout by himself at this area. No holder, no ball. Let's see if it worked. Yes, it did. He came out during a timeout all by himself, stood there at the hash mark, and went through his routine with nobody around him. And I guess it works. Yeah, he first saw something for sure. And crushed it right through the middle. And that's still a very successful drive for Bandy. So the field goal makes it a 17 point game. 51 seconds before halftime. We got to step aside. There's a lot of orange inside Vanderbilt Stadium today, but they haven't had a whole lot to cheer about. Vanderbilt has been clicking on both sides of the football. How about this number? Last three possessions for Vanderbilt. They've amassed 34 plays over 200 yards. They've had two touchdowns and a field goal, and they've had the football for almost 18 minutes on those three possessions. Wow. wow. But a lot of this come because they've been really good on first and second down, and we talked about it. Third and short has been easy. Line drive kick sails out of the end zone. Hey, Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern, it's Thinking Out Loud with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. They'll talk some football, watch your participation via social media throughout the show. It's also available streaming live on the ESPN app. And something tells me those guys are going to be talking about SEC football championship game coming up a week from today. It's week, week 13, and they haven't talked to Dave Neal. I'm, I'm done with those guys, so. Great show. Though. Garrett Tano over the middle. Callaway, first down. He's out over the 40 to the 41. That is a 16-yard pickup, and Tennessee in hurry-up mode. Yeah, you got three timeouts. The clock obviously stops after a first down. They're looking for any kind of points here going into halftime. Four-man rush. Garrett Tano lifting it up in the air, looking for Jennings, who couldn't catch up to it. Coming up at halftime, you can watch a live performance of the Spirit of Gold Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming now on the ESPN app. They're ready to go. I'm excited the way their team is playing this first half. Darren Tonner comes underneath with it, and it's dropped by Ty Chandler. Probably a good thing it was dropped. I mean, you still got three timeouts, but they had to use one there. But big third and long here 
for Tennessee. the interception. Coppin comes up with the interception. But you're going to see the pressure come from the inside. It forces him to throw it a little bit faster as Kenny Aver comes up the middle. And you can see the pressure. He throws it before he wants to off his back foot. But you can see Look at the pass interference there. You, you get a little tugging by Tate Daly there. Oh, boy. Did he ever grab him. So Vanderbilt kind of sneaks away with one right there. So 166 passes. Actually, 167 passes by Garantano without an interception. A school record is now over. The previous play is under further review for possible targeting. Oh boy, I didn't see anything in there, so let's re rack that boy, see if we can see something. Well, that'd just make it worse if that was a Tennessee player they're talking about. Right. Both coaches are asking why, where is it coming from? See the, you can see him coming there late. Number 58, Jameer Johnson, comes in there late and gets definite contact with the head of Ladarius Wiley. Jameer, the left guard. Oh boy. And that's it's, it's, that's one of those just undisciplined, unnecessary yeah. penalties right there. Why would you do that? He's, Already on the ground. I mean, I think that's a clear shot to the head and neck area. Absolutely. You see Will Friend, offensive line coach right there, giving Jameer a, a, a earful. But this may be the day for him. Nathan Niehaus already banged up at practice this week. Jerome Carvin got the start at right guard, the true freshman. Now their left guard, Jameer Johnson. After further review, maybe leaving. Number 58, Tennessee is charged with targeting. It's a 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down, Vanderbilt. Number 58 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. Reset the game clock to 14 seconds. 14 seconds on the game clock, please. And that's one of those plays where Coach Pruitt just says, why are we doing this? It's kind of a culmination of how they've been playing this year, and they've made some strides here and there. But that play reverts back to where they were at the beginning of the year when they struggled to have consistent play. I mean, that moves Vanderbilt just a few yards away from field goal range with 14 seconds left. Vanderbilt has a couple of timeouts. Shermer under pressure. He'll be dropped, and that took him way out of field goal range. And I think Derek Mason will just say, let the clock run down, and we'll get to the locker room. And that's exactly what will happen. But a first half that was dominated by the guys wearing the all-black uniforms. Shermer, 15 of 16, 165 and a touchdown. 201 yards for Vanderbilt, just 85 for Tennessee. Jeremy Pruitt going to have to try to figure some things out if they want to get back in this down by 17 points after 30 minutes of football in the 112th edition of this Tennessee-Vanderbilt football rivalry. Let's go down to Dawn. 
Well, Coach Mason, Kyle Shermer, 15 of 16 that half. What's been the key to his efficiency that has to continue? Just making sure, uh, you know, for him, man, that he's trying to uh, take what the defense gives him. At the end of the day, you can't go broke taking a profit, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. Keyshawn Vaughn, we saw him. He did not have him in the back half of that first half. What's his status? Do you expect to see him in the second half? I don't know. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen him. I'll see when I go in. Obviously, man, we've, we've had some shots to the head, so we just got to make sure at the end of the day, man, that we just continue to protect ourselves and continue to talk to the referees, man, about making sure they keep this game intact. If he can't go, who yeah. do you lean on to fill those shoes? All those dudes. At the end of the day, Kari Blaston games, Jamari Wakefield, Josh Crawford, uh, you name it, we got it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. You name it, we got it. Well, in the first half, they did have it. They lead it by 17. They blanked the balls. Time for us to get it to the studio. Halftime report coming up with Dari. Vanderbilt up 17 to nothing as we get set for second half football on what has been a gorgeous day here in the Music City. Kyle Shermer has been uh, nothing short of spectacular today as he has led Vanderbilt to the 17-point first half lead. Dave Neal back alongside the quarterback, D.J. Shockley. And, uh, you know, it takes a team effort, but let's face it, the quarterback has a ball in their hands nearly every single play <laughs> yeah. offensively. He's been phenomenal. Maybe his best game at Vanderbilt. Yeah, and that's what it's going to take to get him to a bowl game. And he has to be a coward, especially with your big-time back, Keyshawn Vaughn, yeah. going down. He has to pick up that slack, and he has done that. Well, it's been, he started 15 of 15. <laughs> This afternoon and everything seemed to be just uh, flowing perfectly for him. Yeah, the early rhythm he got into was pretty special and he was starting to see the field really good. He was seeing holes, he was seeing angles, and then he knew where to go with the football when he did get pressure. That was the key to the first half, not panicking, but just being in control of this entire offense and putting his team up big there in the first half. Garantano, 9 of 19, had that interception as they were driving late in the second quarter. But 66 yards, 85 total yards for Tennessee in the first half. Vanderbilt had 201, and they just dominated the time of possession over 20 minutes with the football. Tennessee had it less than 10, obviously. So we are set for second half football. Let's see what kind of adjustments the Vols made offensively. They just could not get in any kind of rhythm. Well, moments ago, Dawn had a chance to catch up with Coach Pruitt as he left the Tennessee locker room. Well, Coach Pruitt, Kyle Shermer has been efficient through the air for them. What adjustments do you make to slow him down? Well, a lot of balls have been behind the line of scrimmage or short intermediate, and we've missed some tackles. we got to do a better job at matching people, and we got to get a little more pressure on them. Offensively, from an execution standpoint, what did you point out to your guys in the locker room? Well, we had a couple of mistakes up front. It cost us a chance to, to have a to have a play. Uh, and we really hadn't given our offense the ball because the defense been on the field the whole half. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Well, they didn't miss an assignment here. Ty Chandler, foot race to the end zone. 75 yards. I'd say they figured it out. Nothing like a good halftime ripping from your head coach to come out and give you something to be special about. And what a great job of getting out on the corner there. You talk about setting that edge, and then you see Chandler hitting that crease, and he has the speed to take it the distance. Riley locked through the center. Gets out and pulls around and creates that huge lane for Chandler. And 75 yards later, Chandler's in the end zone. Eighty five total yards of offense in the first half. They pick up seventy five on that run from Ty Chandler, the sophomore coming back home from right here in Nashville, Tennessee, went to Montgomery Bell High School. Look at you got to get around the edge. You're going to get two pullers, get around the edge and kick out and it creates the huge lane for Chandler to run through. When you get lined out in front in space and you cut him down on that second level, and that has been the issue in the first half, not being able to get up to those linebackers. And you talk about Johnson and Lockyer, two veteran guys on that offensive line getting up to that second level and Chandler with the speed to take it the distance. 
That'll certainly put a little pep in your step on that Tennessee sideline. As these two teams, somebody's going to a bowl and somebody's going home. Paxton Brooks will kick it away. Tamari Wakefield back deep. And that one will sail through the end zone and out to the 25 yard line. Well, worst case scenario there for Vanderbilt. Don't forget, Thinking Out Loud coming your ways, 7 o'clock Eastern Time on Monday night. Marcus Spears, Greg McElroy, talking football. And just about anything else, maybe they'll bring the puppets back out. Who knows? <laughs> you never know with those two. 7 o'clock Eastern time. How about the puppets last week? That was pretty hilarious by those two guys. Well, let's see what the Commodores do here. They will go with a run game and blasting game is hit after a gain of three yards and driven back by Batuli. Let's go down to Dawn. Hey Dave, DJ, Keyshawn Vaughn of course headed to the locker room in the first half at the end of the first quarter. He has not been ruled out officially by Vanderbilt, but I can tell you guys he is not down here on the sideline right now. Well, he got hit yeah. on two separate plays in the head and the second one he got, it was like a pinball. Two Tennessee players popped him in the helmet. Here it comes to Lipscum out to the 35, and he is wrestled down, and that should be good enough for a first down. But here are the hits that we saw Keyshawn Vaughn take. Boom, that last one was intense. Now watch this, two times, one, two, right after another. And that was the one that sent him into the locker room. Yeah, it's a physical game, no doubt about it, but he took two hits on that particular first half that were, we both said, wow. And he's so valuable when you start thinking about him. You know, he left the Florida game with an injury, and it was downhill. That Fandy led 21 to 3 in that game. Well, that was a backwards pass. Good thing Lipscomb was able to catch it, and then he is dropped for a big loss of six. Darren Kirkland read the play and throws Lipscomb to the turf, and now he's slow to get up. That is six tackles behind the line of scrimmage today for the Tennessee Volunteers. We saw in the first time Elijah Lipscomb get up a little slow. He limped to the sideline, but was able to come back to the ball game. So this is something to keep an eye on with him. And you talk about losing one of your key players in Keyshawn Vaughn. But Elijah Lipscomb, definitely one guy who could take the top off of defense. And you see all the white shirts just rallying into the football. Second down, and let's call it 16. Shermer all day to throw. Deep over the middle, pass is caught. First down, C.J. Bowler still on his feet. C.J. dropped at the 30-yard line. Micah Abernathy brings him down, but a 49-yard pickup. And they give this offensive line some credit. Watch how long he has to, to sit back and survey the field. So four-man rush, and he waits to get in that last window. And Vandy runs what we call an indigo route. He had an in and then a go route on the inside, which created a huge lane for that big catch by C.J. Bola. Two tight end set. Straight handoff goes to blasting game. He's stuffed at the line of scrimmage and dropped there. Now to give us it up, a time to get an update. Let's go to the studio and Dari. All right, Dave, you talk about out of the shoot fast in the second half. Alabama's already found the end zone twice. This time it's Tua to Joshua Jacobs. They've gained 144 yards of offense in the first five minutes of the third quarter, guys. My goodness. A little slow start last week. We saw it firsthand with the Citadel. It's tough to keep him down, man. It's so tough. It's so explosive. 
Shermer going up top and overthrows Lipscomb. Had man coverage on the outside. DJ Henderson back there in coverage, running stride for stride with Lipscomb. And I love the calls. First down, you're in plus territory after a big play. You get one-on-one. -on -one. They're trying to keep a guy in the box. Kyle Sherman's been efficient. He's been throwing the football really well. Why not take a shot? Efficient, I'd say he's almost perfect. <laughs> 213 yards through the air. But now they're looking at third and 10. Looks like Tennessee might bring some heat. Now they'll back off, it looks like. And timeout. Tennessee was. Everybody's kind of pointing around each other. You got him, huh? You got him. I don't know. Well, we'll figure out who's got who when we come back. Third and 10. Well, as Kyle Schirmer wraps up his Vanderbilt career, what are some things you like and don't like maybe about his game as he looks to the next level? Well, on the next level, you have to be smart with the football. He does a great job most of the time of being a good decision maker. But also, you like the ability to recognize things pre-snap and get your offense into a favorable spot. He has been able to do that today, and he gets the football out with that quick release as well. Things he has to work on is anticipation under pressure. When he gets people in his face, know where that hole is and know where to put the football, and then the deep ball accuracy is something that on the next level as well as what he's done all year has to do a better job of having that deep ball accuracy but he's been really good at all those today. Yeah the anticipation under pressure he's he's been as sharp as they come third down though coming up maybe you're in two down territory here we'll see at the 30 yard line here comes some pressure flag is down over the middle pass is caught inside the 10 goes Kalijah Lipscomb. That's a 21-yard pickup. And spot on, we talk about anticipating the throw. You got man coverage on the outside. Outside, number eight, defense. Penalties decline. Result of the play is a first down. And he lets the football go on time and gives his receiver a chance to come get the football. And you look at what he's done over his career. Prolific is pretty a uh, big word, but he has done some outstanding work for this Vanderbilt team. And he epitomizes what Coach Mason says that Vanderbilt man is all about. First and goal just inside the 10. They'll go handoff. There goes Blassen game as he cuts it inside the five down to around the three yard line. DJ Henderson trips him up, but a gain of six. And what's even more impressive about this drive is coming off what Tennessee just did on the first play. It goes 75 yards for a big touchdown, and you get kind of punched in the face, but your senior quarterback settles you down, makes some big throws, especially on third down, and now you're knocking on the door to score again. Second down and goal. Three tight ends in the game now for the Commodores. Last in game, you're running back. Kari gets the football. He's met at the line of scrimmage and driven back by Emmett Gooden, the junior college transfer at Independence Community College. Of course, he was big on last season's edition of Last Chance U. He's been a nice addition to the inside core group of defenders for Tennessee. And anytime you get near the goal line, it's all about penetration. Can you beat the guy in front of you? A lot of man blocks up front. Can you be the more physical unit up front, whether you're on the old line or defensive line? Shermer rolling out, back of the end zone, looking for Pinckney. He got some pressure coming right in his face from Kyle Phillips and probably forced him to throw that one before he was ready, and here comes the field goal unit. Yeah, Coach Pruitt calls Kyle Phillips the defensive MVP. Gets away from the cut block, gets off that and forces Sherman to throw the football a little bit higher than he wanted to with Pickney running across the back of the end zone. Kyle Phillips, a big part of this defense for years. SEC academic honor roll guy as well, so he's a very smart individual. This is a 20-yard field goal. Not much more than an extra point for Riley Gay, who's hit from 43 yards out. Parker Tomei will hold it. Kick is on the way, and it hits the upright. Oh, he shook the goal post. And Tennessee still has life.
a chip shot that clanks off the uprights. 17-7 here in Nashville. Seventeen seven our score Vanderbilt just missed a 20 yard field goal and Tennessee has some new life another long drive for Vanderbilt 11 play 73 yards but nothing to show for it Tennessee came out of the locker room to start the second half first play only play 75 yard touchdown run from Todd Chandler momentum clearly on the side of the guys in white and they capitalize on them another drive. Garantano will hand it off. Another big hole right up the middle. This time it's Tim Jordan. He drives it out to the 39-yard line. That's a gain of 19. But Darius Wiley bringing him down. Look at Jerome Carter, 75, come around, kick out, and then here comes another huge first down run. This is what Tennessee needs to get this game going, to get it back in their favor. It's first down runs, settle Jared back into this ball game. Man, some throws down the field started to happen but Tim Jordan has at least speed as well big first down play already going without Jameer Johnson up front so a lot of work for Riley Locklear at guard Ryan Johnson stays at center Garantano is just belted at the 30 yard line never saw him coming Josh Smith with the sack and the reason this took so long is they were trying to double move on the outside but no time to get it out. And you can see him come right off the edge here and get to Jerry Garantano and just a good inside move there. The tackle overreaches and he comes inside. Just a great move by Josh Smith and no time to see the double move is Jerry. Second down and long. Garantano this time gets rid of it in a hurry, asking his receiver, Jordan Murphy, to make a play on the outside. And too many black jerseys. Swarm him led by Ali Muhammad. It'll be third down and long. And Dave, if you're Tennessee, you gotta try to have a seven-man protection or something because yeah. that was a quick throw and he still was getting hit. And usually that's a five-man protection, but Jerry's taking some licks here to start, but you gotta find a way to protect your quarterback. Four-man rush. This time he has some time and passes dropped. Oh, it was in the hands on that far sideline and then dropped at the last moment by Josh Palmer. Jawan Williams was running with him. These are the plays that Tennessee usually comes down with. The 50-50 ball, not much separation on the outside, but look at the ball placement. But a great job of Williams right at the end. Watch it right at the end. He swipes that left hand through and gets just enough up armor to get that football out. <laughs> High short kick. That will hit around the 35. We'll see where they spot it. Tennessee couldn't do anything with the football. Vanderbilt has a chance now. Vanderbilt's going to look back and think what could have been here in 2018. Go back to Notre Dame. They played the Fighting Irish as well as anybody. Had a chance to win it late in the fourth quarter, but ended up losing 22 to 17 on the road. And then Florida, that was a shocker. Keyshawn Vaughn gets hurt in that game. They led 21 to 3, but lost by 10, 37, 27. Then against Kentucky, tied at 7 in the fourth quarter. Miserable conditions in Lexington. They would wind up losing 14 to 7 as Benny Snell with the rushing touchdown provided the difference. And then just a couple of weeks ago against Missouri, they led 28 to 19 in the third quarter, but ended up losing by five. Had a chance late in that game. Couldn't close it out. Well, you start doing the math. You know, let's just say you're not going to win all those. But if you win a couple of those, you're feeling real good about where your season is, right? Yeah. And oh, we got a late penalty. Yeah, flags here. come in late. Yeah, David, to your point, you know, you at the least you're, you know, you win seven, eight ball games and you already have a bowl bid. 
Well, Jeremy Pruitt over there saying throw him out of the game, whatever he was, it looked like. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 16 offense. The penalty's 15 yards from the dead ball spot. The down counts. It's second down. <laughs> that is number 16's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Did, did he kick somebody? Let's take another look, see if he doesn't. Oh, absolutely. All right at the end, that's unsportsmanlike for sure. And you can see why Coach Pruitt won him out of the game. That's Elijah Lipscomb. So I don't have to deal with look, this guy. Look, here's the deal. I, that, that, was, that was definitely a penalty, right? But I think throwing him out of the game was, might have been a little much. <laughs> Not to Coach Pruitt. He says, I need yeah. this guy gone. But he won more of those, and he will be gone. Second down and forever. Second and 25 now. Shermer dumps it off to the far sideline of Wakefield. And he's met and hit and dropped, and now it's going to be third down. Give him about three on that pickup. Third down and 22 coming up. The defensive coordinator, Kevin Sherr, a lot of credit for bringing this team out this second half. And you can see these guys are flying around, playing with way much more intensity than they had in the first half. Yeah. Every tackle has been a rally to the ball. You see three, four, five white hats to the ball. And they are taking it to Vanderbilt here in this third quarter. I was just watching Tracy Rocker on that sideline, too. The longtime coach here in the SEC. He's all excited as well. See if his front four can do something here on third and 22. Did they jump off sides? No flag down. They will wrestle blasting game to the turf. No gain on the play. Darren Kirkland coming up big for the big orange. And now Vanderbilt will punt it away and Callaway will get back and return punts. There's Tracy Rocker, who interestingly <laughs> enough, his son, Kumar Rocker, one of the best high school pitchers in the country last year, has committed to play baseball for Vanderbilt this upcoming spring. And Dave, I talked to Coach Rocker before the game. He said, hey, son, you got to choose a side today. <laughs> Callaway fields it cleanly, looking for some room. Already has a punt return for a touchdown this year, and he has tripped up at the 47 so a relatively short field for Tennessee Tennessee's got a little momentum going their way but they trail by 10 we're gone for 60 seconds Dorian Oka in studio. We update the Iron Bowl where it's tightening up a bit midway or a little later in the third quarter Jared Stidham Back foot throw to Darius Slayton, who makes the big time adjustment, makes the grab. Guys, it's a 31 21 game in the third. 10 point game in Tuscaloosa. Darian, a 10 point game here in Tennessee has the football. And let me ask you this from a play calling standpoint Tyson Helton, offensive coordinator over there at Tennessee. They came out at 75 yard run right out of the, right out of the gates. Then their next possession started with a 19 yard run and then they threw it three times in a row and had to punt. Yeah uh, I'm with you Dave. Why not keep the ball on the ground where you found some momentum. You move some guys up front. I expect to see you run more in this drive. Garantano keeps it and he is thrown to the turf. Oh Dangbo stepping up and making the play. Well, Dangbo does a great job here. Do you take the dive? Do you take the back or do you stay on the quarterback? And he plays it just right. Stays square and has the ability to change direction and get to Jared Gantano. That's a great individual effort. Sidearm throw. That one is dropped. Incomplete. Mark Curls says incomplete. Big hit came from Jawan Williams. Boy, Jawan's been all over the field today. The effort to get there is what you like. Fight through a block and make the play. Now the momentum is swinging to the side of, Brooke, of Brett Vanderbilt as their defense has stepped up here and forcing another third and long for this Tennessee offense. Empty set on third down and 14. Boy, that's going to be delay a game. Before the snap, delay of game, number two, offense. 
Please reset the game clock to 450. 450 on the game clock. That's a five yard penalty, still third down. So now it's third and 19. Darren Tano, 10 of 22 for 71 yards today. Three-man rush. High throw. Good catch by the tight end, Dominic Wood Anderson. He'll pick up nine, but they are 10 yards shy of the line to gain. That's been a Tennessee offense that just went backwards the last two drives. And the inability to get the run going again was critical on that drive. Ellis will call for a fair catch inside the 10, so Vanderbilt will be backed up after the 45-yard punt. Well, we'll return in 15 seconds after this message from Belk. Should have gone to the game day gear shop at Belk.com. Visit the game day gear shop at Belk.com. Well, I hope he got his gear. It looked pretty easy to get gear, yeah. Got good service, so <laughs> that always helps. Yes, it does. <laughs> First down and 10 for Vanderbilt. 4.05 to go third quarter. Shermer throws over the middle, pass is caught. Good enough for a first down. It's a 13-yard pickup by C.J. Bowler. And, you know, Derek Mason was talking to us a little bit about how these freshmen have started to come along and how Shermer's trusting them down the stretch. And C.J. Bowler is one of the guys who has a really good rapport with Kyle Shermer, even though he's a freshman. And you see him hanging on there, kind of a one-man route there, and winning on the route with C.J. And off left side. That'll go to Wakefield. For more on that combination of a senior quarterback and young receivers, let's go to, to Dawn. Yeah, I actually spent some time with Kyle Shermer this week. He pointed that out. He's really started to click with these young receivers at this point in the season. They've provided some depth, given him some balance. I've actually seen him on the sideline communicate with them. We've seen Vandy a couple of times this year. It seems like he communicates them with them tonight a little bit more than he has earlier in the season. So they're really starting to click right now. They'll need to click here on second down and nine. They'll go handoff again to Wakefield, and he's got nowhere to go. He is escorted out of bounds by Daryl Taylor. That'll be a loss of two, and Vanderbilt going backwards now. What has happened here since we started the third quarter that Vanderbilt's offense looks like Tennessee's changed some things up, perhaps? They have. They've become more aggressive defensively. You see more tighter man coverage, not playing as much off coverage. In the first half, we saw them clean, completing short, easy routes now. These defensive backs are hugging up on these receivers and not allowing them free access to run these routes. Lipscomb goes in motion. A little extra blitzer coming. Pass is caught on the outside, but it's short of the first down. That's Lipscomb who will pick up 10. I think you got to punt it here. Oh, absolutely. Fourth and a yard. He's still up by 10 points. Tennessee's offense has struggled the last two drives to get any type of momentum going. But what they're doing, though, is they're getting the field shorter and shorter is Tennessee. Callaway will stand back at the 33-yard uh, line and wait for this punt for Parker Tomei. That will hit and take a favorable Vandy bounce. This is going to end up being a good punt. All the way down to the 15-yard line. A 54-yard kick gives us an opportunity to get another update from Dar. Yeah, Dave, as soon as Auburn made it a 10-point deficit, Alabama made it 17. Tua with his fourth touchdown pass of the day. This one to Devontae Smith. 
gives Alabama a 17 point lead again guys on the season Tua now has 35 touchdown passes two picks. Well, dog, I think that's pretty good. So, I mean, come let on. me ask you this, Mr. Shockley. Are you <laughs> shocked crazy. or not shocked that Alabama's put up 21 in the third quarter? The way that offense is, <laughs> yeah. not shocked yeah. at all. I mean, they, they play at such a high level, can hurt you really quickly once they get it going. And off goes to Ty Chandler. You know, watching in person yet uh, last week, to uh, perform it's just some little nuanced things that you don't really pick up from a television the way he just kind of takes a half step in the pocket that gives him a throwing lane yeah the way he spins out of trouble just some stuff that really just opened my eyes to how talented that young man really is he's so poised and he doesn't panic inside the pocket he he's one of the, the more pure passes we have in the league Chandler stuffed at the line of scrimmage no game They've tried to run it a couple times on this drive and not much success as Jordan Griffin makes the tackle. And now the Commodore fans trying to make some noise on this third down. Garantano, wide side throw, knocked away at the last moment by Aline Muhammad. It's just such a long throw to throw to that other sideline on the out route, and with not much presence to really drive off the football, he just sits on the route, and Muhammad drives on it and knocks it away. Joe Doyle. Boy, a line drive kick. Well, that could have hit anybody, even a Vanderbilt player, and shot straight back. It was so low. But how about this short field for the Commodores? A 31 yard punt. Dari, we're trying to make sure you earn your paycheck today. What's going <laughs> on, buddy? As I'm just chilling watching football. I don't mind working a little bit. Benny Snell in Kentucky getting ready to take on Louisville. That game over on ESPN2 coming up at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Benny Snell, by the way, 207 yards away from the school record for career rushing yards. Kellen Mon and AM facing LSU next, right here on the SEC Network. Thank you, Dory. Now you can take a break. We'll be back to you in about <laughs> 90 seconds. How about those helmets from Kentucky? I'm just going to say, man, how many helmets does Kentucky have? A lot. And off goes to Blassing Game. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. That means we have 15 minutes to play to determine which one of these two teams will be going to a bowl game. Which one will be heading home for the winner? Vanderbilt players loving life right now. They're up 10. 15 minutes to go ball inside the 50 yard line you know school's out obviously for Thanksgiving holiday but the students in the area making their way to the game Vanderbilt trying to do something they haven't done since the mid 1920s and that thing. is beat Tennessee three consecutive times Shermer lofts it up on second down looking for Lipscomb flag down catch is made Oh, what a catch by Kalijah Lipscomb right over Bryce Thompson. Oh, my goodness. This catch, watch this, come over. Wow. That is. Pass interference, number 20 defense. The penalties decline. The result of the play that is, is a crazy. catch and a first down. Top 10, no doubt. You think he's going to catch it with the left hand, but he just pumps it to the right hand and then gets the left and the right foot down. That's next level right there. Man, Kalijah Lipscomb showing up. 23 yard pickup. Kalijah Lipscomb came into this game with 73 catches, has eight today. 
Shermer gets some protection. Has man coverage on the outside. Is that caught for a touchdown? Oh, yes! Amir Abdul Rahman with the catch of the day. He just won to up his teammate. Amir Abdul Rahman says, whatever you do, I can do better. Watch him come inside and snag this with that right hand and get the left on it. Wow. Obviously, they will take a look at it again. You got Bailey Buchanan on the coverage. The ball thrown slightly inside. I don't think that ball ever hit the turf. It looks like he has that right arm under it. I say six points. But what an individual effort. Laying out for it. Ball thrown slightly inside. But making a play on the football. That's one of those freshmen we were talking about. The freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. Amir Abdul Rahman coming up with a highlight real catch and I think that's got to be a touchdown maybe this look will tell us something that we haven't already seen After but further review, that's a TD the on the field is confirmed touchdown what a catch <laughs> two catches in a row Lipscomb set it all up and then Shermer completes it with a second touchdown pass of the afternoon and the day that Kyle Shermer's having is, I would say, about as solid as anybody would want. 25 of 28, 309, and two touchdowns. Well, if you got one game to finish it out with, Dave, this would be a good day to finish it off in the way he's playing. Wow. Well, we talked about it. I mean, it, the fact that they're back to back makes it even more impressive. You got two top 10 plays here. Kalaja Lipscomb sets it up with his one-handed grab on the sideline. And then you have Amir Abdul Rahman thrown inside and finished it with a big play there. Dory and OK in studio. We just watched the great catches from Lipscomb and Abdul Rahman. How about Henry Ruggs from Tua? Remarkable grab, guys. It's Tua's first fourth quarter touchdown pass all season. Bama's rolling now. There's the separation that Alabama wanted. Maybe this is the separation that Derek Mason wanted. Back to back, fabulous catches. Trying to be the first team since the mid 1920s to beat Tennessee three consecutive times. Tennessee just has not been able to move the football today. 182 total yards. Their touchdown came on a 75-yard scamper. First play from scrimmage in the third quarter. Marty McGee, you know the boys. Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern time right here on the SEC Network. They'll have you covered with everything that is the SEC and then some. That'll be Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern. Marty and McGee, the Eminem boys. You can also catch that streaming live on the ESPN app. New boys right there. New team right it's there. It's my new guys. Those are my new guys. They had on the thing Marty had on a chicken suit in the last show. So. See, those are my guys. <laughs> Hand off left side. Nothing working for Tim Jordan. No gain. Would you be willing to put on a chicken suit on live TV? They will. For the right price. <laughs> For the right price. <laughs> There's another suit. Would you throw on a nice onesie right there? He's Christmas all smiles. Season. Yeah, he's all smiles. <laughs> he's all about the holiday season, isn't he? Second down and ten. Murphy in motion will settle in on the slot to the near side, and that's where Garantana will look, going deep. As Callaway underthrows him right through his hands. Well, that ball just floated in the air for the longest time. Yeah, this ball's got to be thrown sooner. I think Jared was a little kind of lackadaisical in his drop, trying to 
get that ball out there, but he has to let this thing go. You see, he just takes his time, and then now he's a little bit late, and he's open. You got to let it go, and Callaway still had his hands on him, had a chance to get it. But the common theme on this has been third and long. That's the kind of play that Tennessee made when they beat Auburn. Yep. Not today, at least to this point. Garantano again lets it go up top. Tight spiral, and that'll be incomplete. Jawan Jennings was hoping there'd be a flag. No such luck. And it'll be fourth down. And the only good news is those plays only are taking six or seven seconds off the clock each time. And it's just, it's weird to watch the Tennessee offense because Jared Garantano has been really efficient throughout the year, but they've been a lot of third long situations in this ball game, and a lot of low percentage throws have been incomplete. Fourth consecutive punt for Tennessee now. Joe Doyle. Trey Ellis is back at the 35 awaiting the kick. It is a high short kick. Fair catch called for and taken at the 38. Timeout on the field. 13 27 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Vanderbilt Stadium. Where the homestanding Commodores try to finish the regular season on a positive note that would send them to a bowl game. They lead Tennessee 24 to 7. Shermer has been off the charts good today. And they're doing this without Keyshawn Vaughn, who has not returned to the game after he got hit on two separate plays in the helmet area and left the field of play. Now, the run game has not exactly been there since he has left, but the Commodores still have sustained their lead. They led 17 to nothing at halftime. Big hole off the left side. Blasting game across midfield. A pickup of 14. And you can see the misfit right here. Kirkland goes into that left side A gap, and they replace right where he comes from in a big gain on first down. And as soon as we talk about the run game, they hit one. And you expect to see a lot of it in the last 13 minutes of this ball game, trying to salt it away. Chris Pierce goes in motion. Now Lipscomb in motion, and now. Hand it to him around the edge, looking for a couple of blocks, and that'll pick up nine yards. This is just one of the staple plays for Vanderbilt. If they get the leverage they want, they give it to Elijah Lifko, who has the speed to get around the corner, but the real focal point for this offense is what you do on first down. And you, you see the targets and receptions from Kalaja Lipscomb today. When one guy goes down, somebody else picks up the slack. Boy, Lassen game hit that hole in a hurry. We'll pick up the first down for hard earned yards for Carr. Vanderbilt now will just try to chew up some of this clock. They've had some lengthy drives today, and they have completely dominated the time of possession. 32 minutes they have owned the football in this game. Tennessee's had it for less than 16. 60 plays for the Commodores, 40 for Tennessee. Run off the left side by Blast again and pick up a yard. And they go back to the time possession uh, what Vanderbilt have done to make it so successful is you look at the stat line and you say Kyle Shermer's thrown it 28 times as we had a Tennessee player down. But his efficiency has allowed this offense to continue to move the chains all day. That's Daryl Taylor down on the ground. The junior linebacker will step aside while he is attended to. Steps up, fired to the end zone, Pinky, touchdown. 
Ty Chandler, 75 yards. And is that caught for a touchdown? Oh, yes! Look at over the shoulder of David Williams, the athletic director for the time being, as he is retiring shortly. Shermer passes caught. That one to C.J. Bowler, a gain of 13 and a first down. But speaking of athletic directors, David Williams has been around here for a long time, but he has decided to retire. There's word on the street that there are just days away from announcing who the new athletic director will be. Anxious to see how that might transcend Vanderbilt athletics. There is David Williams. He has been a vital part of this Vanderbilt athletic and academic institution. Come on, you can wave. Come on. <laughs> come on, David, wave. He said, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, really, come on. Oh, big hole off the left side. Blasting game. Still on his feet, driving down to the one-yard line. A pickup of 21. He needed 22 for six. We talk a lot about Keyshawn Bond, but... Mr. Blassingame has came in and took up the load. And look at this tough physical run. Continue to drive his legs and almost gets in. But we heard Coach Mason at halftime, and Don asked him, who's going to pick up the load? He said, all them dudes. <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, at the end of the day, all them dudes. <laughs> Two tight ends set from about the one-yard line. Blasting game left side trying to power in. They're going to say he was denied. Blasting game on the carry. Second down. Matthew Butler, the first one there. And David, it's not a foregone conclusion that they get this, but I love the fight out of Tennessee right now. They could have easily just gave up and gave in and let that touchdown go, but they're still fighting here late in this ball game to try not to give up any points. Left side, touchdown Vanderbilt. Sean McMore came in at fullback and led the way for blasting game to pick up the touchdown. Whenever you get a little extra in the backfield and you run a stretch zone on the outside, you better get in the end zone. And Blast Game has definitely picked up the slack here. And Sean McMore helps lead Kari Blast Game in for another bandit touchdown. Point after is up and good. And the assault continues. And you see Sean McMahon, number 50, lead the way in there, just pushes the defensive back in the end zone. It's such a, it's a valiant effort there by Tennessee trying to stop it, but does a great job. And Blasting Game does the rest for a walk-in touchdown. And look at the athleticism of Big Sean to get on the edge. Blasting Game now with 68 yards on the ground and a touchdown. It has been all Commodores. Dart, what do you got? Guys, the assault is on there. It's on in Tuscaloosa as well. Jalen Hurts into the game now, throws across the middle, and watch the burst from Jalen Waddle. Touchdown tied, 52-21, eight minutes left in the Iron Bowl. I look like Dari back in the day with that speed, huh? No doubt. I've seen Dari go from, uh, you know, the green room to the screen room that fast before, so he's, <laughs> I don't know who's faster. <laughs> Lucky to have Peter Burns and Dari Noka handling our Saturdays in the studio. I'd like to see those two in a foot race. <laughs> <laughs> Out to the 25-yard line with 9.02 to play. Hey, we'll be back in 10 seconds after this message from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Everyone looks good in camo. You should see my husband in camo. I'll take it. 
You know, I'm sure Josh, her husband, does look good in camo, but I'm proud to say that I, I don't have to make that judgment. <laughs> oh, man. Your, your wife came home with look, look camo. You be excited about that, right? <laughs> Everybody likes to look camo in their life. Garantano to Jawan Jennings. He can't hold on. Incomplete. You know, they're just, it's... Tennessee has been pretty good this year in those 50-50 balls. It's yep. almost like how they have to win the pass game. No doubt. And that's how we've seen tonight is they tried at least four or five of these 50-50 yeah. balls, and they just have not been able to come down with it. So I know Vandy came into this game thinking we have to be good when the ball's in the air and be patient and knock it away. Garantano. This time, Jennings is wide open. Great pass from Garantano. Maybe his best throw. And look at Jennings fighting for every yard. Down to the 32, a 43-yard pickup. Finally, Jordan Griffin able to wrestle him down. That's a great ball there. I mean, you're having time in the backfield, and Jared standing in there delivering on a strike. Hasn't been his most efficient ball game, but he found Juwan Jennings there for a big game. And at the end of that play, there was a roughing the passer penalty against Vanderbilt, so that'll move it all the way inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. And yeah, right at the end, watch, you can see him jump up right in the face and a little extra there at the end. Garantano going to the end zone and Callaway with a catch. A flag comes in. Is that offensive, though? Looks like it'll be on defense. Pass interference, number eight, defense. The penalties decline. Touchdown. Nice grab by Callaway. So Jennings sets it up with his nice catch and run. And then Marquez Callaway finds some room in the end zone. And it all started with his release, getting off the jam, not allowing him to get his hands on him, and a nice ball over that left shoulder. And Callaway adjusting to the football and getting his feet down. So 8.31 to play. Boy, Tennessee taking a timeout on a point after. Well, I think the, the talk on the sideline is that you go for two here. Well, let's see, now you got to start doing all this math. Right? Yeah. And that was not, not my uh, more fancy subject there, I like to say. Well, you know, you get the two, and it becomes a 16-point game, so your two touchdowns and, you know, what are the chances of making converting three two-point conversions in a game? <laughs> We've seen it done before, right? We'll take it. We'll take a break. Back in a moment. Well, Jeremy Pruitt did the math, and they're going to go for two. Offense is on the field. You get you convert the two-point conversion here, and you make it a 16-point game. So. It, at least you give yourself a fighting chance if you can convert here. Got to give yourself a chance here. And where is Callaway, who's down at the bottom of the screen here, who's been the 50-50 by? Jennings goes in motion. They will flood the near side, and it's batted down. Josh Smith, again, he's had some kind of day. He has four tackles, one behind the line, a sack, a QB pressure, and two passes broken up today. Winner this one. Get to go to a bowl game, get that bowl watch, right? Like okay. they get that bowl watch, all that yeah. swag they give you. Need all those good bowl yeah. gifts. Love the bowl gift doing our time. You, uh, you sugar bowl? Where, where were you? Uh, we went to. We went to. We only went to the Outback Bowl one time. Yeah, and we went to. A, year. We went to the Sugar Bowl yeah. a couple times. So they give out some really good bowl gifts. What was your bowl. best gift you got? Do you remember? Oh man, that's a great one. I know it was 13 years ago. You're getting <laughs> old, brother. <laughs> the mind is not what it used to be. No, we we got some cool stuff. You know, from watches and rings and. One year we got a bike, got our name on it and stuff. It's pretty cool. Onside kick fielded by Vanderbilt.
Don't forget, coming up after this one, we'll get you at the College Station. LSU, number seven in the country. Aggies, 22nd ranks. 7.30 Eastern time. Great way to wrap up a busy day of football right here on the SEC Network. Of course, you can catch that on the ESPN app as well. Georgia just throttles Georgia Tech in Sanford Stadium today. South Carolina and Clemson coming up at 7 Eastern. Kentucky and Louisville at 7 East. Boy, you talk about a mess. Louisville's a mess. They, that LSU and Texas A&M game could be very interesting for Texas A&M on the side of first-year coaches with Jimbo Fisher. You come up with a big win like that, it kind of solidifies how, why you brought this guy in. Kyle Shermer. Big day for him. I mean, what a way to close out your final game at Vanderbilt Stadium. 26 of 29, 322 and two touchdowns. Hit his first 15. They'll swing it near side. How about that spin move by Kari Blassingame? He'll pick up nine when Tennessee looked like they had him wrapped up for about a one-yard gain. Another couple of missed tackles where there have been a bunch of those today for Tennessee. And that's to tell the ball game is they've been in position for the majority yeah. of the ball game. And you talk about six missed tackles on the ball game. Those are equivalent to picking up big first downs and moving the chains. And they just have not been able to make the play when it's there. Again, Keyshawn Vaughn out with an injury. Haven't seen him since second quarter. There's the quarterback sneak. They needed about a foot, and they will have it. Looks like they have it. Let's see. They're not going to say he's going to. Let's be fourth down coming up. But anyway, here's a look at the college football playoff rankings. Of course, Alabama and Georgia set to square off next week. Alabama just cruising right now against Auburn. And, you know, you look at that, DJ, Michigan out after getting thumped. Who's the Thumps. team in? Obviously, Georgia moves up. Oklahoma moves up. And LSU not playing in a, not playing in a, a championship game. So Georgia definitely is the team that moves into that four spot and has a chance to control their destiny next weekend versus the Alabama Crimson Tide. Play clock was winding down. Vanderbilt takes a timeout on a fourth down in just a couple of inches. All right, let's take a look at your updated top six. So George is in. So my question, you know, I, Notre Dame has done everything that they, they, they've needed to do yep you know people can say yeah maybe they don't fit in there with those but all they do is win a football games right you're, you're right and that's the bottom line and in the they played some really good teams that haven't turned out to be good but right. that's not their fault you can't uh, affect them because of what they've done this season they just win ball games and continue to do it obviously they got a big showdown tonight versus USC but let me ask you this so US UCF at number six let's say Oklahoma loses in the big 12 Let's say Georgia loses. To challenge the spot short of the first down. So we'll look at that. But my, my question is, does UCF under that scenario, Georgia loses, Oklahoma loses, do you put UCF in the UCF jumps top into, four. The, into the top four because everybody else has two losses. It looks clearly past the line of game. Right, if that ball touches the 39, right, it, it's first down. It's the markers at the 39 and a half. The only, only tough part is you got a, a hodgepodge of bodies right there. It's hard to see where he ends up falling down, but it's, it's it looks like he's clearly past it, but it's, it's hard to say. I mean, it, His knees go down really late in that play, but the ball and Cal Shermer is 6'4", so if his knees are at the 40, his upper body has to be at least at the 38.
I just it's hard to really judge on those looks exactly where the football we couldn't see the football so I don't know how you I don't know if if there's enough to overturn that to be honest and that's the tough part is so many bodies in there so wherever it is on the field is probably what it's gonna have to stay after further review the ruling on the field stands it's fourth down Vanderbilt is charged with their second team timeout and that was their one challenge for the game so it's gone final in Tuscaloosa Alabama handles Auburn and they will now face the Georgia Bulldogs at the SEC championship next Saturday afternoon at Mercedes-Benz Stadium so here we go fourth down and just a few inches Shermer getting a little help and has the first down blasting game came in there and gave a nice little push So six under six minutes to go now. So let me just go back. So UCF, despite schedule and all that, you have them in there. If Oklahoma, based on what you what you showed me, Oklahoma and Georgia lose in championship games, Golden Knights, yeah, in I a mean, semifinal game. You think about you think about Oklahoma will have two losses. They miss out in their championship game. Michigan taking the big L today. And UCF, I know they don't have the quarterback McKenzie Milton, but that's been a really good football team all year long. And even when you you saw Daryl Mack come in, who's the backup quarterback, redshirt freshman, he actually played pretty well in that ball game. He's going to have a championship game to further see what he's about. But if all that happens, Georgia and Oklahoma lose, UCF falls in that number four spot for me. Okay. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Not necessarily the first four, but the two or three teams that follow. Right. It just it gets real tricky for that fourth spot. That fourth spot is going to be very interesting if some other things happen. I, I'll be. I mean, I'm just totally shocked that Michigan got <laughs> throttled the way they did today. You get you get the opportunity to show everybody what you're about. You play well. All season even the committee said they had the number one defense in the entire country and they put up 60 points on you <laughs> <laughs> Oof. that's that's tough to to fathom well here this Vanderbilt offense the last few weeks of the season has really started to put together some impressive numbers 45 against Arkansas they put up 28 in the loss to Missouri 36 last week and they're knocking on the door again as they enter the red zone one more time. 12 yard pitch and catch. That one goes to CJ Bowler, and the numbers just continue to skyrocket for Kyle Shermer. He has thrown for over 1,200 yards in four games against Tennessee and has 11 touchdowns and two interceptions. I mean, Shermer just loves seeing an orange. <laughs> he has played some of his best football, no doubt about it, versus. Tennessee and the numbers tonight are I don't know if you can be that good in 707 skeleton right there yeah. that, that is that is efficient in so many areas and made so many great decisions tonight end zone wide open Sam Dobbs snuck out of that secondary and nobody saw him, but Shermer just overthrew him a little bit Shermer's having his best day, but this is be, this will be the one throw he will think about as he leads as a Vanderbilt oh. Commodore. This one throw where he is that open. Sometimes that's the toughest, toughest oh. throw to make is like when the guy's screaming wide open. Do you throw it with pace? Do you give it some air? Oh man, that was tough. Sam Dobbs, a senior out of Douglasville, Georgia. Boy, that'd been a nice way for him to cap off his Vanderbilt career. Shermer will throw again over the middle pass is caught and Abdur Rahman with the catch 
He'll be shy of the goal line by about a yard. Buchanan was just hanging on. Another big physical receiver, 6'3", 205, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. And you're talking about having some weapons for the future. If Mo Hassan is the quarterback of the future, he has a couple good ones in C.J. Bolar and Amir Abdul-Rahman. To the end zone, pass is caught, touchdown. Cody Markle. Touchdown catch or touchdown pass of the day for one Kyle Shermer. They were so excited for Cody and he was halfway off the field. They told me to come back and be the protector, but just a great job with the play action and Cody slipping out on the backside. And how about the nimble feet to get it down? Two thirty three to go in this one and Vanderbilt is playing so maybe there's something about the mustache for Kyle Shermer. I don't know. <laughs> nice pitching catch. Soft hands, soft feet. And that young man right there, Kyle Shermer. Leaving Vanderbilt with multiple, multiple big time stats. Look at the stash though. Dave, when are you gonna grow this stash? That's all I want to know. Apparently it's it's the thing to do, I guess. Kyle Shermer. Well, maybe he should maybe he should have that more often because with the stash, he is balling tonight. 31 of 35, 367. Vanderbilt's offense has put up 459 yards in 75 plays. They have run 32 more plays in Tennessee today. Last week versus Ole Miss, 36 points. Tonight, 38 points. You know, it's this offense is really, I, I mentioned it, they've been averaging 36 points a game over the last three coming into this one. And of course, they have surpassed that with 38 tonight. So, you know, maybe they found some stuff here down the stretch. Andy Ludwig, their offensive coordinator, did a nice job calling these plays tonight. Now, you know, let's let's talk Tennessee for just a second because you know, I, there were some people out there for the seed star didn't think that this Tennessee team would win an SEC game, right? Yeah. I mean, last year of course was just a huge struggle. Uh, winless first time ever in conference play. They make all the changes and that didn't go very well. And they finally settled on Jeremy Pruitt after Philip Fulmer was hired as the athletic director and they had some very impressive wins. I mean, there's no doubt you beat Kentucky, a ranked team. You beat Auburn on the road. So certainly there have been some strides made. And that's been a part of the growing process for this entire team, for this program. Incomplete as Keller Chris checks into the game at quarterback. But those are the moments that they can build off of. And for sure, that this team has, hasn't lived up to the expectations towards the end of the year. And you see some of the seniors on this ball club, Shy Tuttle and Kyle Phillips, who have given everything they had to this program and it just hasn't panned out the way they wanted to. But Jeremy Pruitt will find a way to get this program back to where it used to be. Keller Christ coming back near side, and there's a flag for pass interference. Jordan Griffin pushes the receiver out of bounds. Vanderbilt says it was an uncatchable ball, but maybe it was uncatchable because pass interference <laughs> number 40 defense <laughs> The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. It was un uncatchable because it, the receiver was thrown into the bench. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> of course, it's uncatchable. <laughs> He's eight yards out of bounds. Derek Mason's like, listen, Jordan, you're smart, but we don't need that. 
Let's go downstairs to Dawn for more on those Tennessee seniors. Yeah, guys, it was interesting to talk to a couple of these seniors. Obviously, they would have loved to become bowl eligible to extend their careers, but every single one of them talked about how the key, the extra practice would have been for the younger guys because it would have given them a chance to help them develop any more. They even more they care more about making sure the foundation of the resurgence of this program is laid that's a selfless group right there they face some adversity they've been through a lot and they just wanted to re-establish the identity of tennessee football and, and to that point dj when does it hit you that your career's over right now yeah. clearly right now i mean you think about it as a senior throughout the year and you say this is my last robbery game or this is the last time i do this it hits you throughout the year, but until that last game actually happens and you realize you don't get to strap it on with your teammates anymore and get to go to the facility, it's a it's a troubling feeling sometimes to to think about it possibly being over. Before the snap, third and final timeout, Vanderbilt. 208 to play in this one. You know, we, we saw down there Kyle Phillips, one of the seniors uh, for Tennessee, who has fought through some injuries. A Nashville guy. His mom is the athletic director over at Tennessee State. Jeremy Pruitt talked to us about the seniors, and, and you know, it's a struggle. Those guys have had some, some tough times, without a doubt. He wishes he could give them the opportunity to play for something, but obviously that's not how the cycle works. On the positive side, he did say, though, that he feels real good about some of these true freshmen that got some work, especially on the back end of the secondary. Yeah, he talked about there's only four guys on this offense who are seniors, so they got tons of young guys, freshmen, sophomores, who are getting valuable experience, and then they're learning how to play in this program, to creating that culture that they want to go forward, and now those older classmen can really uh, be the, the catalyst to getting this thing going again. I tell you, it's, uh, I think everybody, when Tennessee's good, there's just a little bit more, I don't know, enthusiasm in the league, oh, yeah. whether you like them or hate them. You know, it's kind of like Alabama when they're good. It's more people are invested in it for whatever reason you have. Uh, so maybe Tennessee will turn the corner here shortly under the direction of Jeremy Pruitt. To the hands of Callaway on third down. And I, you know, well, well, while we mentioned Tennessee, I think this is, for that guy, a bigger win than we may yeah. speak of. The new athletic director will be announced shortly, you know, who his boss will be. And you always talk about the AD's guys. <laughs> well, we don't know who it is, so we don't know if Derek Mason's his, his guy or what kind of relationship they have prior to this. But certainly this kind of win and getting to a bowl game is a big statement for Mr. Mason, as you see David Williams, the athletic director currently who is resigning or retiring I should say after a lengthy run here in Nashville with the Commodores and for Derek Mason it's, it's been all about the finish finishing game finishing the season and you look at what they've done since you know the loss of Kentucky where they had three straight losses to Georgia Florida Kentucky you beat Arkansas you lose to Missouri on a really close ball game and then last week you finish a ball game in overtime today you come in and you have everything to play for we talked about a new AD coming in here but these this team fought and now they're gonna have the right to go to a bowl game and push these singers out on the right note talk about a leader 31 and 35 for Sherman Donovan Tennyson. A pickup of eight, 148. You know, if, uh, if Shermer doesn't throw another pass and we stay right here at 31 of 35, he would set a new Vanderbilt completion percentage record at 88%, 88.6. 88 the old record was 88.3. Or excuse me, 83.3. And you know who set that? Shermer against Alabama A&M last year. So he's breaking his own record. <laughs> what was but, your best single game? You remember? Uh, somewhere around like 89, yeah, 90 percent. Just, yeah, just I mean, a tick above Shermer. From, from, what, from what I remember. <laughs> I, 
think it was 89.723. <laughs> Something so, really close to that. That's what I think. Well, Kyle Phillips making that tackle. We talked about Kyle a moment ago. Wish him the best in his future endeavors. Maybe he'll get a shot at the next level. Under a minute to go. Well, it's a big moment for Vanderbilt. Get to go to a bowl game. And that right there, Ladarius Wiley, Derek Mason, his first recruit here to Vanderbilt, he said the unique bond that they built over the last five years has been remarkable. And to send these seniors out going to a bowl game is ideal and perfect in his eyes. That will do it. So for the first time since 1926, Vanderbilt has knocked off Tennessee three consecutive years. They have won five of the last seven. But most importantly for that man, Derek Mason, who is freezing cold right now, <laughs> his team heading to a bowl game. <laughs> Shake it off, Derek. I'm, I'm sure he'll take that bath right now, send his team to a bowl game. I bet that bath actually feels really good. Oh, emphatically, Vanderbilt. Beats Tennessee 38 to 13. They had the football for almost 43 of the 60 minutes. My goodness, what a day for Vanderbilt. Let's go down to Dawn. <laughs> hey, Coach Mason, he's he's waiting for a towel, guys. He's been celebrating with his team. <laughs> you want my sleeve, Coach? <laughs> Here you go. I know they want to come. I know. We're, we're going, Coach. I tell you what, it's three straight wins over your rival Tennessee tonight. What does this one mean to you and for your program? First time since 1926. It's about these seniors. You know, for us, I mean, man, I got to give a lot of credit to Coach Pruitt and his staff. His football team came out in the second half. Uh, man, man, they put it down, uh, man, they go down and score, and it's, it's, it's ball game all over again. This football team and this football program will not be forgotten. These seniors will not be forgotten. We talked about being relevant. We going bowling, baby, and that's what I'm talking about. We're relevant. Coach, you talk about those seniors. Your quarterback was insane tonight. What did Kyle Shermer mean to this offense tonight? Kyle Shermer stayed right in the middle. He did what he was supposed to do. We talked about it. Don't get too high, don't get too low, stay right in the middle. And that's what he did. I love this dude. Man, he's my quarterback. Man, I've been proud of this young man since the first time he stepped on the field. I love him. He, he goes out a winner. You're going bowling, Coach. Congrats. We're going bowling. Erica Dale, <laughs> coming on Nason. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, that like is, that. hey, that's a happy man. That is, that is awesome. a happy, happy man. And th they're going bowling. Look, they're going bowling. <laughs> uh, that is fabulous. As the linebacker, Jordan Griffin, throws a strike. Speaking of strikes, a guy that didn't miss the strike zone today is alongside Dawn. That's right. I'm here with Kyle Shermer. Kyle, I don't know what it is about Tennessee, but you are always at the top of your game. That is now three straight over your rival, your senior year, and now you guys are going bowling. What does this one mean to you? Yeah, this is awesome team win. Get to play, uh, you know, another month of football with, you know, the best guys in the world. So it's awesome. We're excited. You hit your first 15 passes in this game what was the key to efficiency for you you know it was uh you know us as an offense just trying you know not do too much just take what they give us and you know those shots will you know come those explosive plays you know later on in the game so it's just a matter of us doing our job and uh you know it was fun you guys lost Keyshawn Vaughn early in that game what can you say about some of these young guys that stepped up for you guys yeah well a young guy but old guy Kari Blazin game uh you know fifth year senior uh, he's played so hard all year, and he had a great game. He really stepped it up, and uh, so happy for him. David DJ in the booth said it's all about the stash. Is that that was the performance tonight? All about the stash? I don't know. I might have to keep it. <laughs> my mom, my mom will be mad about that, but uh, I might have to keep it. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> I think you need to keep it. <laughs> oh, the Vanderbilt Nation happy today. Per perhaps the happiest guy here is. This man, Derek Mason. <laughs> I love that. Uh, his team is going bowling, and they were prepared. Jordan Griffin with a strike right down the middle. 
Vanderbilt wins it 38-13. Time to get it to the studio. Great night for the Commodores, guys.